Welcome to Total Recast, where I Total take films recast. with questionable casting choices and recast all the major roles, including the ones that I thought were cast well to begin with. Today I'll be looking at Highlander. And here we are, we're the princes of the universe. Starring Christopher Lambert, also known, he's French, so Christophe Lambert, but I'm American, so Christopher Lambert. Clancy Brown, Roxanne Hart, and the legendary Sean Connery. Highlander is considered a cult classic. It bombed in the theaters, but killed on home video. There will be spoilers, so if you haven't seen Highlander, why the hell not? It's awesome. Anyway, I suggest you watch it before watching this video. First off, let me say that Highlander is one of my favorite films. I love the casting, particularly Clancy Brown, who is excellent as the Kurgan. Hey Rockefeller, how'd you like candy? She said you were kinda kinky, huh? Don't ever speak to me. Look, I didn't know that. Don't ever speak to me again. Do you understand? And who could ask for a better mentor than a 50-something Sean Connery? Because you were born different, men will fear you, try to drive you away, like the people of your village. A few years later, Connery would win an Oscar for playing another mentor character in The Untouchables. And last but not least, it has a rocking soundtrack by the band Queen, and rather stylish direction from uh, music video director Russell Mulcahy. So much has been made over the casting of Christopher Lambert as the Highlander, who is uh, a Scottish character, Lambert being a French actor, and of Connery playing an Egyptian. Obviously Connery is Scottish. And Lambert was certainly an odd choice for the role. At the time he spoke almost no English and was, and still is, pretty much blind without his glasses. And he can't wear contacts, so not only do you have a French guy playing a Scottish guy, but a blind guy playing a swordsman. Did you say, message? Oh, I'd love one. Let me get my wallet. <laughs> I I'm especially tense right here. In the yeah. starters, and maybe the groin area. <laughs> ah, no chico, Connor McCloud is arguably Christopher Lambert's most iconic role. He also played Tarzan in the film Greystoke, which uh, required him to convey his emotions without words. It was that performance that got the attention of director Russell Mulcahy, who was impressed by Lambert's screen presence. Soon I must go to my family. Why? Dead. Uh, well, who's dead? Dead. Dead like mine, yours dead. Why do you say that? The story goes that Lambert's people told Mulcahy that Lambert did speak English, and Mulcahy didn't find out that he didn't until after Lambert was already hired. <laughs> Sorry. Now, Lambert is a good actor. He is interesting and charming and is very good in the role of McLeod. Brandy. Bottled in 1783. Wow, that's old. 1783 was a very good year. Mozart wrote his great mass. The Montgolfier brothers went up in their first balloon. <laughs> And England recognized the independence of the United States. Is that right? Yes. That being said, he has trouble putting on a Scottish accent and also covering up his French one. Want to hear another theory? This Fazil was so upset about lousy wrestling tonight. He went down to the garage and in a fit of depression cut off his own head. Now, of course, Sean Connery is known for his very distinct Scottish accent one that he makes no effort to disguise regardless of the nature of the role he's playing. Two good examples of this are his portrayal of a Lithuanian-Russian submarine captain in the hunt for Red October. Now there are those who believe we should attack the United States first, settle everything in one moment. 
Red October was built for that purpose. And as an Irish beat cop in the aforementioned Untouchables. You want to get Capone? Here's how you get him. He pulls a knife, you pull a gun. He sends one of yours to the hospital, you send one of his to the morgue. That's the Chicago. What Conry lacks in range, he more than makes up for in charisma. I personally find it to be a welcome presence in any film. Clancy Brown plays the villain of the film, the Kurgan. The Kurgan is a Russian barbarian who Ramirez warns will plunge the earth into darkness if he wins the prize. The prize is what the immortal, the last immortal gets after all the other ones are dead. Brown is known for his intimidating stature and booming voice. There can be only one! <laughs> Before Highlander, he played Frankenstein's monster in The Bride, which starred Sting as the Doctor. Much like Lambert in Greystoke, Brown has very few lines in The Bride and has to get the job done by emoting. Ironic that he would go on to be such a prolific voice actor. Anyway, he is great as the Kurgan. I have something to say. It's better to burn out than to fade away. <laughs> Roxanne Hart plays Brenda Wyatt, a forensic investigator working for the police, who is looking for McLeod's sword because it's like a special sword of the time with the way the medals folded, something like that. I need to see him, God damn it! I'm afraid that's impossible. Mr. Nash is... Mr. Nash is dead, Miss Ellenstein. What are you doing here? I'm looking for a dead guy named Nash. He died at birth in Syracuse, New York. And uh, she becomes his love interest. Hart is not terribly pretty, and I feel a bit too old for the role. She was almost 35 at the time of filming, five years older than Lambert. That said, her performance is good. She is naturalistic and is given a lot to do, having seemingly the same screen time as McLeod, and possibly more dialogue. We follow Brenda on her search for the rare samurai sword, and in her investigation of McLeod. Because she spends a lot of time learning things we as the audience already know, this plotline can be a bit dull, but that's no fault of the actress. Well, everybody's got their problems. McLeod has a crazy ex-girlfriend also, a first wife, an adopted daughter that becomes kind of like a mother figure, oddly enough, and another immortal friend besides Ramirez. But these characters, though memorable, have little function in the main plot and don't have a lot of screen time. There are also a pair of cops that suspect McLeod of being a serial killer. But they function mostly as comic relief and their story really doesn't go anywhere. So I'm left having to recast Brenda, who I do believe is miscast, McLeod and Ramirez, who seem like odd choices on paper but are very good in their roles, and the Kurgan, who is brilliantly cast and the best character in the movie, or at least the most entertaining. Not an enviable task. Nevertheless, let's press on. I'll submit four actors for each role whom I believe could have been effective in the role at the time. First, the forensic investigator who wants to find out, is that a sword in McLeod's coat, or is he just happy to see her? Brenda Wyatt. Michelle Pfeiffer. Pfeiffer would have been 27 at the time of filming, perhaps best known for wearing S&M outfits and licking herself. <laughs> Pfeiffer co-starred alongside Al Pacino in Scarface a few years earlier, perhaps too beautiful for the role of forensic investigator, but a great actress. I think Pfeiffer could convey the smarts and toughness required for the part. Cocaine. It is cocaine, isn't it? Well, it was. But not anymore. No. You were out with Annie Leonard the night he was arrested. Let me tell you that. What, you were not with him? Yeah, I was out with him, yeah. And you weren't selling cocaine? No, I wasn't. He was. Then what were you doing? I was trying to teach him how to sell it. You're serious. While looking for a still picture of Michelle Pfeiffer, I came across a picture of Diane Lane with blonde hair. I never realized until then that she and Pfeiffer looked somewhat similar. Lane might have made the list if not for her being too young at the time, only 20. I know she was married to Josh Brolin for years, but I think she was already in her 30s or 40s by then. I wonder if she was married before that. Son of a bitch. Must be the accent. Dana Delaney. Delaney is probably best known for playing actress Josephine Marcus in the 1993 film Tombstone, where she enjoyed riding carriages, horses, and mustaches. In the sunshine that brightened our pathway a while. And sit by my side if you good one more.
What do you think of this singer? Nice voice. At the time Highlander was filmed, she was doing a lot of TV. Many enjoyed Delaney on the show China Beach, where from 1988 to 1991, she played a doctor whose male patients constantly fake hernias. At the time of filming, she would have been just shy of 30 years old. She exudes confidence and intelligence. When they find out the multimillionaire Robin Masters just trying to put this small, struggling They stole movie his company, book! That's his opinion. And anybody else's who can read. Don't you dare get patronizing with me, you conniving, double-talking civil servant! Linda Fiorentino. Fiorentino made her film debut in the 1985 movie Vision Quest, which is kind of like Karate Kid, but with wrestling. She played a sexy, streetwise older woman, a part she would play again many times. I know what turns me on? Hands. Really big hands. At the time of filming, Fiorentino was 27. Many will remember her as the offbeat coroner from 1997's Men in Black. Fiorentino's main strength is her swagger. She comes off as not only the sexiest, but also the smartest person in the room. Thank you can also be very effective. Could you leave? Please. Well, I haven't finished charming you yet. You haven't started. Give me a chance. Go find yourself a nice little cowgirl, make nice little cow babies, and leave me alone. Angela Bassett. Bassett did loads of television through the late 80s and early 90s. Her breakout role was playing Tina Turner in 1993's What's Love Got to Do With It. Not me. You want nothing without me, and you ain't gonna be nothing without me. I'll give it all up. Just release the claim on my name. Means you're gonna walk out of here with absolutely nothing. Except my name. Since then, she's still all over TV and in the movies, playing smart, tough women. That gives you no reason, do you hear me? No reason to tell me that I can't be a mother to my son. What you did is no different from what mothers have been doing from the beginning of time. It's just too bad more brothers won't do the same. But don't think you're special. You may be cute, but not special. At the time of filming, she would have been 27. Now we move on to McLeod's mentor, Ramirez. The late Omar Sharif. Omar Sharif is known for playing the lead in the film version of Dr. Zhivago, and also for playing a supporting character in Lawrence of Arabia, an Arab named Sharif. Way to get out of your comfort zone, dude. She's in Yuriatin. Yuriatin? The private life is dead for a man with any manhood. We saw a sample of your manhood on the way, a place called Mink. They've been selling horses to the whites. No. It seems you burnt the wrong village. They always say that, and what does it matter? A village betrays us, a village is burnt, the point's made. Your point, their village. At the time of filming, he would have been just over 50 years old, a couple years younger than Connery at the time. Sharif was Egyptian, as Ramirez claims to be. Now, I'm not a stickler about casting actors who are the same race as the character they're playing. Still, it would be cool. Being less of an action hero type than Connery, Sharif might be able to make the character of Ramirez more sympathetic. The boy is letting them see him. He's in plain sight. They do not know if what they see is real. Something to do with the mist. Apparently, they find dangerous things, spirits in the mist. The boy was being polite, giving them time to decide if he's real. Morgan Freeman. Freeman's acting ability and screen presence are well respected. He would have been just shy of 50 at the time of filming. A year later, he would receive critical acclaim for playing a pimp opposite Christopher Reeve. Excuse me. That's a bad outfit. <laughs> ha ha, very funny, motherfucker. Jonathan Fisher. Jonathan, right, right, right. I will show you the streets, bro. Jonathan Fisher has a lot to learn. I take the bread. Hey, take it easy. Yeah? You're gonna write them notes that everybody's been asking for. But then you're gonna say that on the day that that dude bought it, you and I were in Rockaway somewhere having a hot dog. I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna get you. I ought to blow your brains out right now. If I'm dead, you're dead. Christopher Reed, Morgan Freeman. Street smart. Freeman would go on to play many mentor characters over his long, freckly career. I see his portrayal of Ramirez as being not dissimilar from Connery's, suave and commanding. Ben Kingsley. Kingsley famously won an Oscar for playing Gandhi in the 1982 biopic of the same name. But they cannot take away our self-respect if we do not give it to them. 
Have you been to prison? They beat us and torture us. I say they beat us. I am asking you to fight. To fight against their anger, not to provoke it. We will not strike a blow, but we will receive them. And through our pain, we will make them see their injustice. And it will hurt, as all fighting hurts. But we cannot lose. We cannot. They may torture my body, break my bones, even kill me. Then they will have my dead body, not my obedience. I'm not a big fan of his and haven't really sought out his movies. That whole Iron Man 3 Mandarin thing pissed me off. But that's not his fault. It's easy to see Kingsley in the role of Ramirez. And like Omar Sharif being small of stature, it makes for a good mentor that you kind of don't want the Kurgan to kill. He would have been in his early 40s at the time of filming, which is a bit young for the part, maybe, but I think it would work. Hector Elizondo. Hector did a lot of TV in the 70s and 80s, playing a wide variety of roles. His first big film role came in 1990, playing the kindly hotel manager in Pretty Woman. Oh man, if you were calling the cops. Yeah, call the cops, that's, that's great. Tell them I said hi. Women's clothing. Bridget, please. Yes, Bridget, hello. This is Barnard Thompson here at the Regent Beverly Will... <laughs> Thank you. Yes, but I'd like you to do a favor for me, please. I'm sending someone over. Her name is Vivian. She's a special guest. In 1985, Elizondo would have been almost 50. Elizondo is known primarily for playing fatherly characters, and I think he would have brought that sort of warmth to the role. On to the really fun stuff. The villain of the film, the Kurgan. Dolph Lundgren. Lundgren played the iconic villain Ivan Drago in the 1985 film Rocky IV. Four also being the approximate number of lines Lundgren has in the film. Uh, Drago, how does it feel to spar with the great former champion? <laughs> yeah. The man's tongue didn't come through customs. He would have been 28 at the time of filming. Dolph's acting ability certainly came into question when he played He-Man in the 1987 film Masters of the Universe. It's this large, it has lights on it. Wait a minute, I have seen that. My boyfriend and I found this thing that had all these patterns of light and this music coming out of it. That's it. Where is it? Well, Kevin has it. He's in terrible danger. Let's go. His acting seemed much improved by the time he starred in the 1990 film, one of my personal favorites, I Come in Peace also known as Dark Angel. And Lundgren was great as the villain in the 1992 Jean-Claude Van Damme film, Universal Soldier. Now where are we gonna shoot her? In his stomach? Nah. In the chest? No. I think we should shoot her in the head. Proof that he looks good fighting a French guy. What more do you need? Now it's uncertain if Dolph's acting abilities were sufficient to play a part like the Kurgan at the time. That said, he was certainly physically right for the part, and he has shown that he can play a charismatic and memorable villain. Rutger Hauer. Hauer is one of my favorite actors, and you're likely to see his name pop up again in future videos. He is perhaps the quintessential 80s movie villain actor, playing memorable baddies in Nighthawks, Blade Runner, and The Hitcher. You better get it up. I'm gonna have to kill you. Unless you're alive. You can't play, and if you don't play... <clears throat> Six, seven, go to hell or go to heaven. <laughs> At the time of filming, he would have been just over 40, which is arguably a little old for the part, but I think he could have pulled it off. And typically villains are a bit older than heroes. At 6'1", Howard is big enough to be imposing, and it just seems like the kind of movie he would be in. He played a knight in the 1985 medieval fantasy adventure Lady Hawk, and he also played a modern-day Satoichi in the 1990 film Blind Fury. I'd like you to meet. Oh, nice guy, I hope. 
Everybody's trying to kill me lately. Adam Baldwin, no relation to Alec and his brothers. Adam Baldwin is mostly known for TV roles like Chuck, Last Ship, and Firefly. No good with words, don't, don't use them much myself. Not as deceiving as a low-down, dirty deceiver. Jane is a girl's name. Jane ain't a girl. Wish I could say the same, Lawrence, but this is disappointing as hell. <laughs> I'll kill a man in a fair fight. Or if I think he's going to start a fair fight. He is tall and tough looking and has played his fair share of villains. At the time of filming he would have been 23, but no stranger to acting, having appeared in at least eight films by 1985. You know what he was worried about? He was afraid when Dad got home he'd get spanked. Last thing he said to me, he said, you're going to have to take the blame for this one. I couldn't even do that right. I lied. I put the gun in his hand. I said I found him that way. Damn it. I never told anyone before. Vincent D'Onofrio. Vincent didn't have a big movie role until Full Metal Jacket in 1987. That same year, he had a small role in Adventures in Babysitting, where he played a mechanic that one of the kids mistakes for Thor. What's this? There's $45 here. You owe me 50 I know. That's all that we have. Then you don't have a car. No, you don't understand. I mean, we have had the most unbelievable night. Save it! You owe me money. Now you give me five bucks, or you get out. in trouble. Hey, kid. This is the city. I don't help anybody but myself. But I Get was... lost! Wait! I know why you're not acting like yourself. You don't have your special helmet. See, you're wearing the baseball hat. You're supposed to be wearing this. Take mine. Go on, take it. Take it. You giving this to me? Oh well, yeah, you're my hero. Here. Here, take the car. Thanks, Thor. You're welcome. Hey, kid. I got one of these at home. Hey, kid. Oh, world is smiling with me. Hope the color has light. Have a good day. Thanks, mean Joe. Smile. He would have been 25 at the time of filming, but he had been acting successfully for several years by that time. Left shoulder! Huh! Right shoulder! Huh! Lock and load! Order! Huh! This is my rifle! There are many like it, but this one is mine! The senior drill instructor, the private pile, has a full magazine and is locked and loaded, sir! Finally, the Highlander himself, Connor McLeod. Mel Gibson. At the time of filming, Gibson would have been just shy of 30 years old. He was already well known for Mad Max and its sequel, The Road Warrior. <whistles> Two days ago, I saw a vehicle that had hauled that tanker. You want to get out of here? You talk to me. Highlander was released a year before Gibson would play Martin Riggs in Lethal Weapon. Well, I'll also say that you're heavy into martial arts, Tai Chi and all that uh, killer stuff. I suppose we have to register you as a Lethal Weapon. 
<laughs> hey, look, friend, let's just cut the shit. Now, we both know why I was transferred. Everybody thinks I'm suicidal, in which case I'm fucked and nobody wants to work with me. Or they think I'm faking to draw a psycho pension, in which case I'm fucked and nobody wants to work with me. Basically, I'm fucked. Now, there are critics of Gibson's Scottish accent in the Oscar-winning film Braveheart. I'm not Scottish. If it's no Scottish, it's crap! But personally, I never had a problem with it. A lordship and titles. Gold. That I should become Judas. Peace is made in such ways. Slaves are made in such ways. The last time Longshank spoke of peace, I was a boy. And many Scottish nobles who would not be slaves were lured by him under a flag of truce to a barn where he had them hanged. I was very young, but I remember Longshank's notion of peace. I'd forgotten how beautiful Sophie Marceau is. I don't think she did many English language films. The only big ones that come to mind are Braveheart and The World Is Not Enough. I wonder if she ever got married. Son of a bitch! Are you freaking kidding me? Gibson was obviously one of the biggest stars of the 80s and is known for his physicality. I assume he would have been attracted to the role since there's a scene where he gets beaten mercilessly. I wish I could say that McLeod fought the good fight and the villagers let him be. I wish I could say that. William Peterson. Maybe the least well known of the four actors on this short list, Peterson is probably best known as the star of the TV series CSI. The year Highlander was released, he would have been 33. A little on the older side to play McLeod, but still acceptable. The same year Highlander came out, Peterson played an obsessed FBI agent tracking down a serial killer in the film Manhunter which would later be remade as Red Dragon. You want to know how he's choosing them, don't you? I thought you might have some ideas. Why should I tell you? You get to see the file in this case. And there's another reason. Pray tell. I thought you might be curious to see if you're smarter than the person I'm looking for. Then by implication, you think you're smarter than me since you caught me. No. I know that I'm not smarter than you. Then how did you catch me, Will? You had disadvantages. What disadvantages? You're insane. Don't think you can persuade me with appeals to my intellectual vanity. I don't think I'll persuade you at all. You'll either do it or you won't. Besides, we have Dr. Bloom working on it. He's the best. Two years earlier, he played another obsessed cop in the stylish and taunt thriller To Live and Die in L.A. Peterson is an excellent actor with remarkable intensity. It's very easy to see him in the role of McLeod. James Spader. Spader may seem like an odd choice for the role, but I believe he has a lot of similarities with Christopher Lambert. Spader tends to underplay, saying a lot with a look or an expression. He also possesses a slightly sinister quality, which I think works for the part. Were you bitten? What? Were you bitten? What an odd question. What a, what a very odd question. What made you ask such a question? Uh, I don't know. People... When people are bitten, oftentimes it's on the hand. What are you here for? I, um... They want some information about the publishing house, and I'm standing in for my father. Stuart Swinton! Come on in. Would you have a drink with me when we're done here, Miss Alden? I'd really like to get to know you, and perhaps I could tell you a little bit about Will. Thank you. That's very sweet. Of course, I'd love to. Oh, wonderful. Spader would have been 25 at the time of filming, the right age for the character, in my opinion. 
McLeod was going to battle for the first time when the Kurgan kills him, triggering his immortality. The year Highlander is released, Spader played a mean rich kid in Pretty in Pink. See you guys later. Well, Andy, you look ravishing. So he's graduating a month. Now, I don't know when Lizzie you and I are going to get together and do something. Try never. Well, I'm talking about more than sex here. No, you're not. You know, I've liked you for four years and you treat me like shit, you know? I don't, I don't understand that. What's your problem? Can you get off of my car? You know, I've been out with a lot of girls at this school. I don't see what makes you so different. I have some taste. You're a bitch. You know, I think you ought to see a doctor because that condition of yours could get a lot worse. Sean Bean. Bean is a well-known British actor who's appeared in numerous films and TV series. Ha ha, very funny, motherfucker! But if you don't run, if you stand until you can smell the garlic and fire volley after volley, three rounds a minute, then they slow down. They stop, and then they run away. All you've got to do is stand and fire three rounds a minute. Now, you and I know you can fire three rounds a minute. But can you stand? He often plays a villain, as in Patriot Games and Goldeneye. He would have been 26 at the time of filming. Bean is known for putting on convincing accents, such as American, Irish, and Welsh. I think he would have been great in the role of McLeod. And he gets to die in the movie, albeit temporarily. Okay, time for the moment of truth. My alternate cast for Highlander. As forensic investigator Brenda Wyatt, Linda Fiorentino. You have your own place? Yes. Is it a sty? No, it's clean. Do you have indoor plumbing? Yes, I have indoor plumbing, I have electricity, and I have a name. No names. Meet me outside. As the hero's mentor, Ramirez, Omar Sharif. You know, it's a big handicap, this, being a, a sort of uh, people thinking of you as a, as a very attractive man. Oh, it's a hell of a no, handicap. No, it's terrible. It's terrible. Because you have to live up to it, which is yes. not so easy. No, no. Yeah, because when you're dating the first time, for instance, you go out with a girl, it takes you one hour to, first of all, convince her that it's not going to be all that great. As the big bad villain, the Kurgan, Vincent D'Onofrio. I'm telling you, Joe, that I love you. Doesn't that mean anything to you? I think that when people love each other, they should make a commitment. They should have a wedding in a church with the blessings of God, for Christ's sake. And finally, as the Highlander himself, James Spader. <laughs> Now sometimes there are casts that are like magic, so much so in fact that you can pluck them out of one film and put them into another. Is there a film of the era whose cast could be transplanted into the Highlander? I think there is. And that film is The Terminator. Picture it. Linda Hamilton as Brenda Wyatt. You're a terminated fucker. Paul Winfield as Ramirez. They make a statement. Maybe make these jackals work for us for a change. If I can get on the tube by 11 o'clock, maybe she'll call us. Well, how do I look? Like shit, boss. Yo, mom. Arnold Schwarzenegger as the Kurgan. Fuck you, asshole and Michael B. in as the Highlander. Nobody goes home. Nobody else comes through. It's just him and me. Come on, motherfucker. 
Would that work? I think it would. Well, that's it for me. Please share your thoughts in the comments section. If you liked this video, show me some love with that like button. And there are more videos coming soon, so be sure to subscribe and hit the little notification bell while you're at it. Until next time, thanks for watching. Total Recast.